this interview. And I just thank you for the friendship that we have. And Lord, I just pray that you'd bless this time of um, this fellowship together. And also just Lord, for whatever plan or purpose you have for this interview, um, it's just something you've laid on my heart. And I just pray that thy will be done in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, just wanted to start off. If you would tell me what was your mindset at the time when you really started to transition? Um, I know you'd been living as a lesbian. What led you to go into the transgender identity? Well, in actual fact, I had not really heard about this whole cultural thing, trans anything, until I actually went to Key West, which is a very LGBT friendly wow. place. And I went with my then ex wife, which we weren't, we were just girlfriend and, and, and girlfriend and girlfriend, I guess at right. the time. And somebody asked me if I was an FTM because I was bodybuilding. I was starting to get very androgenized because I was using steroids and I was bodybuilding. Oh, yeah. So I had a little bit of the facial hair and stuff like that. And somebody asked me, are you an FTM? And I was like, an FTM, what is that? So they kind of explained to me, you know, the whole concept behind it and that stuck in my head. So when I got home, I started doing research and I found Jameson Green and some other guy who's a photographer or not guy, girl who thinks he's a guy. And I'm like, oh my God, that's me. I'm one of these people, you know, it was like, boom, you know, like that instant like power of suggestion. And from that moment, this was July of 2003, I started going to therapy. I went to a therapist, a gender specialist, and they're like, yep, you're classic. You're, you've got gender dysphoria, you're classic. And yep, it's, you know, I went to them for almost six months, got my letter, got, um, I went to the Cleveland Clinic, which is the only place in South Florida that would actually perform this. And I was there first. And then when I said wow. perform this, they would do hysterectomies and they did a mastectomy. There was a doctor who, who worked on women with cancer and that's where the mastectomy right. is. So I kind of told him, well, it's kind of the same thing. You just got to leave my nipples. And I told him exactly what he needed to do. You know, I showed him pictures. He had never worked on an FDM. So I had to have oh my goodness. faith. And then the other guy was a, a gynecologist. So he just had to remove the, you know, the plumbing. And luckily enough, insurance covered it because I had a bunch of fibroids in my uterus. Yeah. So when he was able to, you know, document that, so I got that covered. So I had the surgeries at the same time. It was like tag team, seven hour procedure. One doctor removed the top and the other one removed the bottom. I was crazy. So that's how it all happened. Power of suggestion. I went to Key West. They told me, oh, you're an FTM. I was like, what's that? Started doing the research. Boom. I was like, oh, that's me. You know, and, and that's a lot more common. I, I've noticed lately, um, especially with young girls, that that's exactly, they're going through something in life. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, when they're starting their periods, they're freaking out about their bodies. And then they're going on YouTube and they've had some kind of other trauma. It's not just that, I realize, but and they're going, oh my gosh, that's me. Yeah. And then they're just like, they, they go from never thinking about being transgender to all of a sudden, that's who I am. That's who yeah. I've always been. Yeah, because it, it almost feels like, oh, this is the solution to my mm -hmm. problems. No wonder right. I thought all this stuff when I was, yeah, this is me. Wow. And it's like a witness protection program. You mean I could be somebody else? I could I could look like that person there. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that means I don't have to be shameful anymore walking around claiming to be a lesbian. Because, I mean, that was always a shame behind, you know, me being that way. You know, I was shamed all through my life, especially when I was growing up. You know, it was not cool to be gay back then. Right. So it was like a solution. I get to like, and plus I'm figuring, well, I'm bodybuilding and I'm getting all this hair. So if I get to be a guy, I don't have to worry about this anymore. Right. It's just like, just do it. You know, and a lot of people, you know, like you said, they, they claim this stuff because there's nothing, Laura, that says you've got gender dysphoria. There's not a test. There's nothing that'd be quantified that could say, hmm, let's see, let's take this test and find out if you really have gender dysphoria. There's not. Right. It's all based on feelings and subjective reporting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a sad thing because, you know, what other circumstances do we say um, just because I feel this way, that's who I am. Like we don't define ourselves just by feeling, No. Um, you know, and, and we don't do that with all kinds of other things. Like for, uh, um, I get, people get mad when I bring up pedophiles, but it's the same thing, you know, just because somebody is attracted to a child does, does not mean that they were born that way, that they were created that way. And yet we're seeing there's a move now that's starting to do that and just saying, oh, this is just another orientation. That's yeah. the dangerous part of all this. 
Exactly. And and it's it's like they're basing you can't quantify feelings. Feelings are always subjective. And that's very dangerous because what you feel today may not be the same thing you feel tomorrow. Right. You know, so it's like we're basing on permanent changes based yeah. on feelings that you can't quantify, you can't objectify, you can't test. There's no blood work that says, yep, for sure, you're born in the wrong body. You know, you could test for chromosome if you're an intersex individual, which right. by the way, a lot of transgender people try to claim intersexuality and that's bogus and that's a lie, okay? They're just using that to get away from the shame. Right. You know, trying to find an excuse, but there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing. And these gender so-called specialists are not trained. They're just, yeah. it's just like one size fits all, you know, and that's wrong because people's life are depending on this. People's families are depending yeah. on this because you're not just harming yourself. You're harming a slew of people. Yes. Yeah, I commented on an article the other day where this lady was talking about how much her kids transitioning had hurt her. And I've gotten all kinds of backlash for that, you know, but um, but you're right. It hurts the entire family. Everybody you love. My parents used to say they felt like their daughter had died. Yeah. Um, but you brought up a really interesting point about how what we feel today may not be how we feel tomorrow, you know, and um I know, was there ever a point where you knew like your feelings started to change or you thought, you know, maybe I'm really not this way or? Yes, actually when I started interacting with other transgender people and I was part of groups and I was actually moderator for groups for this one doctor in Florida who does perform sex reassignment surgery, made me a moderator of one of his groups. And I started seeing the crazy behavior. How some people would just flat out say, I was never a, a man. I've always been a woman, although they were an MTF. And I started right. seeing almost like psychotic behavior coming from some of these people. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, wait a minute. What have I done here? I sound yeah. like I sounded like that a few years ago. Because you start to mature in yourself and you start to realize, you know, I'll never be a man. You start yes. really realizing this, no matter what I do to myself, I knew I wasn't going to get the bottom surgery because I saw what the results of many. Yes. And I was like, it's uh -uh, awful. awful. And I'm like, I'm not doing this to myself. Yeah. So then I started to realize, well, you know what? This ain't really as legit as it seems. And I'm, I'm seeing the behavior of many people. It was like very abnormal trauma based mental conditions. And I'm like, Oh my God. So then I, I'm a very analytical person, Laura, and I really yeah. overthink a lot sometimes. So I'm like, well, maybe I did all this because of the shame, because, you know, it was like a very in intriguing, enticing proposition. Right. You know, which it's like I hated my body. I was bodybuilding and I figured like, well, now I get to like be on testosterone legally and change my body the way I wanted to look because it's all based on looks. It's all ego based. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's I mean, how shallow is that? That we're facing and your your entire identity becomes wrapped up in what you look like. It's so shallow. It is. It is very yeah. shallow. So that kind of got me thinking, you know, and I that was like, well, wow. But then I was like, okay, I'm in this already. So I, I just gotta keep waving that flag, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm already inside the pool. Now I gotta swim, right? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, so I did it for years, you know, and then I, I, um, I started the show back in 2012. And I mean, you know, I, I was married. I, I legally married my my then so-called wife, you know, um, which was a lesbian relationship. <laughs> I mean, whichever way you you slice it, you know, we think, oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm now a straight man married to a woman. No, right. that's that's a lie, you know, and. After a while, you know, I was just like, this is not fulfilling. This is not at all because it just, it, it wasn't fulfilling. I don't think there's a single person in the LGBT that could be frank with themselves and say that the life that they're leading is fulfilling. Right. Because it's not. You're constantly chasing your tail. You're going from relationship to relationship and never being fulfilled. Right. So that unfulfillment is what got me to think and got me to like, then I, I started to become kind of anti-trans, but still living as a trans person. I did the same thing. I <laughs> yeah. And it'd be, no, I never voiced that so much, but inside, like God made me hate being transgender. <laughs> That's <laughs> what happened to me. Yeah. 
Exactly. So, and I kept hearing this voice. God was telling me, this stuff is bad. And I'm like, yeah, this stuff is bad. Right. <laughs> but here I was still sprouting a beard, you know, yeah. walking around Mark Angelo, whatever, you know, and, and I was like, um, yeah, no, this, this is just not right. And then obviously when I started dating trans women, then I was like, wait a minute, they identify as women, but they're actually biological men. Right. And so I, here I am, have been a lesbian for 22 years because I was fearful of men, but I'm going out with men that wear wigs and dresses. Okay, right. <laughs> so what, what am I afraid of? You know, what, I'm, I'm actually you know, getting intimate with these individuals yeah. who still have their male biology intact. Right. So I'm like, that was like really a mind, you know what? You know, I'm going, wait a right. minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to work through that, but I'm like, okay, well, this ain't so bad. You know, it's almost like God. I mean, I'm telling you, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, really definitely. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, well, you know, I'm just, yeah, I, I guess I'm not a lesbian. I can't be considered a lesbian anymore when, you know, I'm, I'm you know, being, being intimate, you know, with individuals that have male parts. Right. So. What was that, that was like at first, though? Like, if you had been a lesbian, did you, when you first started dating a trans woman, did you really think that? Like that he was a woman, or how did how did you make the leap from I'm a lesbian to I'm dating a trans woman? Well, really because different. when I was identifying so called as a trans guy, you know, I, I didn't see myself as a lesbian anymore. Oh. It was like you know, I'm, I'm still even though I was very anti-trans towards the end there, I was still like, okay, well, I guess I'm too spirited, and I guess you know, I mean, you, you come up with all sorts of different things, right. and so. Originally, I would see these trans women at first, like just trans women. I never saw them as a woman because I've been with women all my life. I know the difference. There's a massive yeah. difference. I don't care what they want to say, but there's a massive difference in personality and the way they act and the way everything. There's massive difference. And so I never really felt satisfied with them seeing them as a woman per se because they did nothing, nothing like. And then so I was like, okay, well, you know, they're just somewhere in between there. You know, I, I don't know how I try to justify in my mind, but it just, it got harder and harder to justify. Wow. And I think it was God, you know, God was speaking to me. He's like, that before you is not a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that before you is what I created for you to be with, you know? And I mean, I, I remember, you know, the first intimate moment that I had with the transgender female, which we had normal intercourse, Yeah, you know? And I was like, Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> this is different, and uh, but it was like hmm, this ain't so bad. And uh -huh. then obviously, as the time progressed, they didn't really want to have that type of sex anymore because it did something to their head, and they didn't want to, you know, uh, what's the word? They didn't want to like play along with it or consider it because then it would make them more dysphoric. And that happened with all the ones right. that I've been with. So then it was like, okay, we don't have that type of sex anymore. Then it was just having oral sex, you know, and other things that, you know, I don't think that's probably, you know, something that um, we want to talk about, but right. it wasn't, you know, it became very, I don't know, it wasn't enjoyable because it was always like, okay, we can't do this, but we can't do that. Right. And then it's like, well, what, what kind of relationship is this? You yeah. know? I don't think people realize how bad, well, how frustrating, I guess, is the word that sex between transgenders really is, because you can't, you can't have sex as a, when you're biologically female. You yeah. can't really have sex as a man, even though you try, and you can sort of fake it for a while. But I found the same thing. My partner was male to female, and he did not want to have sex as a man. But that's the equipment he had. Exactly. It's like, okay, well, if you got that, might as well use it. I mean, come on, you know? Yeah. yeah so it was so frustrating. It is. It is. So, um, so what in, um, I know you've talked a little bit about your, um, your childhood before, but I, I don't know the full story. So how did you, um, or what did you think in childhood that kind of led you into these beliefs early on? Well, I think that I was, very different as a child. I was very, um, first of all, hard-headed. And second of all, I was very, had a lot of masculinity to me 
Uh, and I think it's because of what my mother took to try to prevent miscarriages. It's mm. a form of estrogen and pesticide that they were handing out like candy back in the day. And, you know, my mother was very concerned. So were all my aunts because I was typically, you know, I didn't have the, the very feminine type of walking and behavior. So they were like pushing it. They were trying to like break me from it. And I rebelled. You know, right. I rebelled. So, and then I think um, being sexually molested and, and being raised with a very abusive alcoholic father did something to my psyche and my, you know, it was just something that, that creates little bits of trauma throughout your life. And you're like, I don't want to be with a guy that treats me like that, you know, and, and I don't want to, you know, you, you became like guarded with, you know, men because you were sexually abused. You know, and I see that a lot in, and not just transgender um, identifying women that are, that identify as men, but I, I see that a lot in the lesbian community. That mm -hmm. something happened that puts you off from the normal, because what's normal is heterosexual. Right. I mean, I, I hope that everyone could agree with that. Yes. The other is abnormal. The other is not, I mean, as much as they want to claim it, it's not normal. It's not being mean by saying that. That's the right. fact. God did not create two women to be together or two men to be together or people to become Mr. Potato Head. Swap right. and change. You know, that's not God's yeah. plan. Yeah. You know? No, it's true. In fact, earlier, um, somebody apologized for um, kind of an odd reaction to a picture they had seen of a trans woman that was um, had made a, a post on one of, or made a reply on one of my posts. And I said, you know, that's okay. Like I used to do the same thing. It is, you have this um, odd reaction because it is unnatural. God has given this um, ingrained um, way to identify his creation. That is, you know, and when we see something that's against his creation, there is um, this response to it that it's like, that's not natural. You know, and we all have that. And people get mad because we don't just accept it. Um, but I think God's built that into us. Exactly. Exactly. It's like a subconscious thing or God's talking to you. Like, you know, you're not supposed to be doing this. And yeah. that's where we get the guilt. And that's where we get the shame from, you know, and people try to blame him. Well, it's because everybody else doesn't accept you. No, you even knew from the time you were little that you were like doing something that you weren't supposed to be doing. Right. You know, and it's, it's like, I, you know, it's not hate, it's not phobic, it's reality, it is what it is. And I wish people would understand, you yeah. know, but they just, they, they don't, they don't, they, they push away their own feelings and, and they're like rebelling against it and they'll fight to the death with it, you know, and it's like, they know they're not happy. Yeah. They know deep down inside. That's why when we become redeemed, it's such like a, oh, you know, it's like one of those things like, I don't have to fight this anymore. You know, it's, it's such a, a relief, you know, that that you, you don't have to live this lie. You don't have to go against God's will. You don't have to feel like a, a, a strange person amongst, you know, the normal people. Right. What was the spiritual life like at home? Did you grow up in a Christian home or did you hear about God? It, it was a really strange um, combination. My father was Catholic and he was all into the saints and, and he also kind of did a little bit of Santeria. He had you know, oh, wow. this little, yeah. yeah. And then my mom was Catholic, but then my grandmother started become, becoming a Jehovah witness. And um, so that was like a little combination, but I learned mostly about God through my grandmother. I learned mm. about Armageddon. You know, I learned about, Jesus and the sacrifice and you know I'd go preaching with her every Sunday and I'd go to church and to all the events and you know I, she she read to me the Bible and, and I think that planted a seed yeah and though you know I, I think that in my humble opinion the Jehovah Witnesses is a cult like many religions right. are but it, at least it gave me something to chew on right. something, you know, I used to talk to God all the time. I used to love Jesus, you know, all the Jesus stories. I mean, that wow. was always very endearing in my heart. Yeah. And, but then I try to create my own God because I was trying to justify my behavior. And that's what most people do. Yes. They're like, God loves me and he accepts me the way I am and blah, 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 because you're trying to create your own God, like the buffet God and God, my God does this, my God, you know, it's like, no, God's the same yesterday and tomorrow. His living word is very clear about his commandments. 
You know, he loves us. Yes, he loves us with all his heart and soul. And that's why he gave his son to us as a sacrifice so that there could be a connection again. So there could be a cleansing. But now we have to have the mind of Christ. Now we have to live like Christ. That's yeah. the part they're missing. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I noticed I can remember when the Lord started to renew my mind and I started to think more clearly. Um, do, you do you remember what it was like to have like the reprobate mind like it talks about? I can remember just rejecting any truth, even though I knew it was true and I would just reject it and it didn't matter. Reject it and then create your own stuff. You yeah. can find like, no, no, that's not that. This is this way, this way. Actually, Jesus Christ was a star walker and he came to, you know, I, I would create such things. If you listen to my old YouTube stuff, it's like, wow. wow. <laughs> stuff Like I was my own God and what's returning is the Christ consciousness. You know, I even have an album out called Enslaved where, you know, I just, I created my own little, you know, storyline because I wanted God, I wanted Jesus. Yeah. But I also wanted to be who I wanted to be. And I knew that I, you know, that it was wrong, but if I created my own version, then it was okay. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing gays and lesbians that claim to be Christians, but they're really not. Yeah. You know? And you called it enslaved? Enslaved. I think that's really ironic. Why'd you call it enslaved? I don't know. I, it's just like <laughs> I feel like that's what, you know, we are. We're a bunch of slaves yeah. under the system. You know, a matrix of of lies of satanic proportion. You know, but did you recognize that at the time when it's you crazy. called it in play? No, not at all. <laughs> That's what I, I didn't really see the whole big picture behind it. Right, because I've I've noticed in my own life that I think God will speak prophetically into our life in really strange ways. Um, like just me calling myself Jacob when Jacob means a uh, deceiver. <laughs> Exactly. And I don't know what Mark, Mark is somewhere in the Bible. I don't know about it, but that comes up Mark Angelo. Right. Like, where did that come from? You know, crazy. You basically thing. called yourself a disciple of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I've always lived my life very minimalist, you know, very like humble. And I've always followed the ways of Christ except yeah. for the lesbian and transgender thing, you know, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy stuff. I tell you. So how did you first come to, uh, to really come to know Christ? Well, funny enough, my ex was raised, um, Pentecostalism. And, um, and they're the ones that brought in the whole idea and concept of God. And we battle all the time because I was trying to push in the new age stuff. And she was right. like, or he was explaining what their, you know, their beliefs were. And um, it was a battle, you know, but then I started listening to Christian music, you know, because they like to listen to Christian music. And little by little, I think the Christian music kind of like did something, you know, it was just, and now, I mean, I love Christian music. I go to sleep, wake up with it. I mean, it's, I love, love, love Christian music. And I think that's one of the things. And, and started watching Christian movies. And before you know it, you know, I was like, wow. And then I'm like, but okay, but we're not supposed to be living this way. I, I like this Christian living, but we can't be trans. And, oh, yes, we can, they would say, you know, and it's like, yeah. it just don't feel right, you know? And so I had my first bout of detransitioning because I didn't want to be trans anymore. I wanted to be a heterosexual, regular woman alongside this person that I fell in love with. Right. But they wouldn't have it. They detransition a couple of times based on guilt yeah. of their children, but that didn't last very long. Yeah. You know, that lasted very, you know, it was like, I was like, but no, no, no. So I didn't want to lose the person. So I would go back to portraying this Mark persona and I was like miserable. So I kept praying and praying and hoping that maybe, you know, but God goes, no, that ain't going to happen. I'll, I'll just save yeah. you. And, you know, and I'm not saying, I mean, I, one never knows. God works in different ways. What I want the most and what I pray every night is that they go back to being with their kids. Yeah. Because, you know, I was just, you know, it's like they were together with their ex for 17 years. And with me, it's just four years. So I, I'd give anything, you know, for them to reunite and him, you know, be back to being a normal family again, you know? Yeah. So did you, um, oh, I forgot my question. Sorry. Um, 
So what, how did you meet him? Well, it was online. Somebody had contacted me, uh, a person that watched my channel and watched their channel. And they said, you know, you two might make a good couple and you're, you could probably help them because they're, you know, ever since they left their home, they've been all over the place. So I was like, are you kidding me? I just broke up with a trans woman. I want nothing to do with another trans woman. But my curiosity sparked and I looked at their YouTube and I was like, hmm. Yeah. And we started contacting one another because I, you know, reached out to them. And then, you know, my little Rico, Rico Suave personality, because I'm Mark Angel of Cuba, and, you know, I was like, hey, baby, we could really do this, you know, whatever. <laughs> and um, I literally swept them off their feet, and they literally drove from Minnesota all the way to Silver City, which is like Whoa. a long drive, but That's they didn't drive. sleep. Yeah, it's a long drive. They didn't stop to sleep, and they had an accident. They fell off, literally, a oh, mountain man. driving. I mean, I'm surprised they're alive. And I'm surprised anybody found them, you know, and ah. we, we met for the very first time in the ICU ward because they oh got airlifted to El Paso, Texas. They were like maybe 50 something miles to where they needed to meet me in my home here in Silver City, but they didn't right. make it, they fell off the mountain. So the first time we ever met was in the ICU ward and they were distraught. I mean, they fractured C1, C3, C4, T7 and oh. You know, they couldn't use their arms. I mean, they were banged up pretty badly. I'm like, wow, okay. So nobody was coming for them. Nobody was going to help them. So right. I was like, do you want me to stay? Do you want me? And they asked me, please do. So I took on the responsibility. Wow. You know, I'm an occupational therapist. Yeah. So I, I advised them not to have the surgery because that surgery could have either killed them or made them worse of a cripple than they were at the time. And um, yeah, I mean, we I brought them back to Silver City. I took care of them, you know. Um, we got married six months later. Wow. You know. So how long was he in the hospital? Um, almost a week. Then we we went to like an assisted living facility. Then I rented a hotel room that was for handicap because I had to bathe them. I had to feed them. I had to do wow. everything, everything, you know, and just, you know, rehab them completely teach them how to eat right because they ate like a two-year-old yeah you know they weren't eating healthy and you know i got them to to change their habits in many many ways you know and it was you know and i think that's another reason why i kind of like all this nurturing came out that i'm like where are these yeah. feelings coming from you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah god god just i'm telling you sense of humor Massive yeah sense of humor so tell me about some of the ways because I know what you mean when you're talking about when you first start seeing the nurturing, there were so many ways that God revealed to me that my partner was not a man. I mean, that um, was not a woman and that I was not a man. And right. what are some of the other things that you noticed where it was like that obvious, we're well, role playing, but we're not really the other gender. Well, I mean, having been with women all my life, I know the little women things, the little perks, the way they speak, the way they act. It's very different, you know, very different socialization. You know, and, and not trying to go be mean or anything like that, but it's just night and day. So, you know, it's almost like God was saying, well, see, you know, the, this is not really a woman, you know, and you've been with women before, but you know you're not supposed to be with women. But this is, you know, the role that I want you to play. And in the beginning, even though I appear to be the man and they appear to be the woman, nothing was even resembling that in the relationship that we had. Because, I mean, here I had to wipe this person's behind, I had to feed them, I had everything. So I'm like, typically guys don't do that, you know? I mean, not to say that there aren't any men that don't do that, but, you know, somebody else would have said, nice meeting you, babe, check you later, bye. No one's gonna take on that kind of responsibility right. with a stranger. I mean, we've been on the phone maybe two weeks, if that. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So I took on a big elephant, you know, a big, big job, you know, and, um, but, you know, it, it's what God wanted. And that's what God, you know, God wanted me to hear his word through them. God wanted me to, to understand the dynamic of like who I was, you know, which is a woman, you know. Right. And, you know, there's just, there's just a lot of things. The way the patience, the way they uh, lack, lack of patience that most, um, I'm not saying that every man don't have patience, but it's just a very different dynamic. Yeah. God specifically put certain characteristics in women, even women that think they're men, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. 
And God puts specific characteristics in men, even men that think they're women. And you can't run away from that. No matter right. how much you try to run away from it, it's it's ingrained. You know, it's deep down in the core. Yeah, I remember even thinking sometimes there was like things that were intangible. Like I couldn't necessarily describe the difference mm -hmm. at times, but there I would just look at him and it was like, you are such a man. <laughs> don't be crazy. You know, because I one, I was attracted to men, but also um, I wanted a girl. I wanted the world to think I had a wife because I wanted to be a heterosexual man. Yeah. Um, but so it, it was such a conflict. <laughs> it's very frustrating because, you know, as trans guys, we want to be the husband. We want to see that role. Right. We want to be treated like one, right? And it's like, you're not playing this game right. <laughs> you're not doing this the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. And, and, you know, and like you said, you see the difference and then it gets frustrating, especially me that I was with somebody, married to somebody who kissed the ground I walked on. Yeah. You know, a biologically born female who treated me like I was a total guy. Yeah. So here I am being with these trans women. I'm like, no, 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 you're not doing this right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, and I, I know they get upset about it, but it's the truth. I mean, you can't hide truth, you know? They really are just different. Yeah, so, very. And very. I don't think we can totally explain that. I mean, there's just things that God hasn't totally revealed, but it's something that's so obvious when you start living that way. Yes. Very much so, very much so. And it's just, it just doesn't seem authentic. It seems very synthetic, just like every, every synthetic thing that we do to try to become this thing, you know, and it's just, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't flow. There's a lot of arguments, you know, there's a lot of head buddy. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably had that a lot too. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Not because so much him though. It was interesting. We never really fought much. I think we both had that kind of personality that we were just very, both of us were very docile, very easy to get along with in general, um, uh -huh. but with a lot of other people, very much so. And like, but it was also, I found myself just hiding all the time. Like I did, I always felt like I was going to be exposed. Yeah. So, I mean, how did you like, did you go through a lot of times where you were, you found yourself just lying about your your past all the time or did you were you living openly transgender or did you live more self well i was all over the media you know when i all first time, yeah. yeah i was everywhere i mean i have a ton of documentaries tv shows so it was kind of hard sometimes i could go out in public and they're like oh weren't you on mari povish oh weren't you on national geographic and i was like yeah that's me you know yeah no. so it's hard to be stealth i think the only time i ever played the stealth card was when i was working for walmart recently um, I live in a very small town, and although a lot of people in the town know that I was trans, no one in Walmart actually knew that. And I wanted to keep it that way because, you know, I was working lifting heavy, and and there were other guys, and you know that thing with macho men, how they. And I'm like, if they find out that I was born a woman, they're gonna like really make fun of me, and it was right. just like. So I was trying to pretend, and then the girls were hitting on me, and I'm like going to myself, you don't want, you don't want this, you really don't, because <laughs> I'm not real, you know. And, and that, that really like it plays on your head. It doesn't right. a number that you can never, ever really impregnate a woman. You can never really, you know, have a normal relationship. You could maybe be with somebody who's bisexual, but still it's not, it's not normal. Did you Something's missing. Like when, um, when you first started to transition, did, did it dawn on you? And I mean, it would have been obvious if we thought about it, but did you really think through like, okay, I'm never going to be able to impregnate a woman. I'm not you know, no, going to be biologically male. You don't, you don't because you're <laughs> so bought and sold on this idea that you're not, you didn't read the fine prints. You're like, <laughs> we're, we're not sign. You know? Yeah. Oh, you no, know, really it's like I should have read those fine prints because, and most of these young people really don't get what they're getting themselves into. Right. They really don't realize it's a life of pharmaceuticals. It's a life of complications from these pharmaceuticals. Yeah. You know, and if they get surgeries, it's a life of complications from these surgeries that you get. You're shortening your lifespan. You're messing with your brain because testosterone in a female brain messes with the synapses in the way you think. I've already, I've only been off T now. It's going on four months and I see the clarity. I'm yeah. making better sense in my words. Before I would have problems finding words. 
That's yes, a, I had the same problem. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm healing about, you know, it's like, I feel okay. It's getting better. You yeah. know, and I used to think it was me. And then when I started reading about the research and I started hearing other trans guys say the same thing, yeah, I'm having problems with creating words and in my thought process. And another thing you get like fractures and, and ligament problems and pains. Yes. And I started seeing that in, on Facebook pages of the friends that I had that were trans. I'm like, something's up here. Yeah. But doctors don't tell you this. No. And I don't think they know totally. Probably not. Probably yeah. not. You know, and, like and estrogen, is even, estrogen's even worse. If testosterone is bad, estradiol is even worse. I mean, that's the leading cause of cancer. You know, that's a leading cause of strokes. That's a leading cause of embolize. That's a leading cause of so many disorders and diseases. Mm. But endocrinologists ain't gonna tell you that. No. You know? Wow. It's it's really sad. I mean, it I wish that people would stop getting so angry and wearing their feelings on their sleeves and realize that when we advocate against it, it's for their own good. Yeah. Not, not only for their physical aspect and mental aspect for their spiritual aspect yeah you know That's why i get so mad at christians who don't want to deal with the trans issue and they're like oh just let them you know they'll um they'll eventually come to jesus you know and that's true like and i realized god allowed me to walk this but at the same time I'm like you don't understand this is not something they can just experiment with for a few years <laughs> and then they're going to come out of it unscathed yeah no. We have major consequences because of this. Exactly. They don't realize that. I mean, I was in the lifestyle for 38 years and I'm not thinking about, you know, have I shortened my lifespan? I don't know what I've done on my body because I've had a full hysterectomy. I don't have any hormones flowing on my veins. I, I thought about going on estrogen, synthetic, but I'm like, that's like playing Russian roulette again. I'm just off the synthetics. Do I want to go back and put synthetics in my body? Yeah. So I don't know how my body is going to react you know, from not having any, any hormones in it. I'm praying that because I eat healthy, because I've been a healthy individual for a long time, I don't smoke, I don't drink, you know, I, I eat, I'm a vegan. So yeah. I'm hoping that, that, and I exercise, but I know that if, you know, that I've shortened my lifespan from what I've done, oh. you know, and I, and I know that those that are doing this, that don't take care of themselves. I mean, I've lost friends who have died flat out massive heart attack, got into a coma and died. I have friends who've had massive strokes. I've had a lot of MTF friends who have had heart attacks like crazy. They've come out of it, but they're not the same anymore. Yeah. So people don't realize there are ramifications for this. Yeah, and uh, it's just so sad that people are so desperate to do this and people, the church is so afraid to tell people the truth. And I was hoping, you know, I don't think that Christians get that just because someone reacts a certain way doesn't mean that it hasn't affected them. Exactly. You know, I used to go home and think about things that were said to me far more than I would have told anybody. Yeah. Were there Was there anybody that tried to share the truth with you while you were living as trans? Not really. I mean, my mom would never call me by my male name. And, and uh, she says she prayed for me all the time, you know, and God answered her prayers. But who wants to listen to their mother? <laughs> I mean, right. you know, it's like we, we've learned to rebel from our parents from the time we were younger. But if right. I would have had somebody who I looked up to or somebody that I saw in the trans community to say, hey, don't do this. Yeah. I would have never done it. Right. You know, but there was nobody, there was hardly anybody doing it. Never mind anybody saying, don't do it. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah, like Christians don't realize they're taking this lukewarm approach and all it's doing is just feeding the system. It's feeding the agenda, which is, it's getting progressively worse. They're indoctrinating children. They're pushing this along with pedophilia now. Yes. You know, which is, I believe that this whole LGBT has a pedophilia what is it Condon. undergirding under yes and and it's it's like people don't see it but there is something very very satanic behind all this yes. and you know and they're just pushing and there's a lot of money behind it you know where they're not even allowing people to voice a different opinion about it they're just wanting to you know if they could shoot me in the head and shut me up they would Right. You know, because they don't they don't want to hear this, but it has to be told. And people have to you have to allow 
different views, yeah. but they know that they have nothing. It's a, it's a house of mirrors. It's just, you know, they have nothing that's concrete. It's all based on junk science and subjective feelings. So they have to lie. They have to cheat. They have to play dirty to get to where they are today. And there's a lot of money backing this lots of money. Yeah. You know, and I, I think too, like, um, I've noticed that there's a connection with the homosexual movement, with transgenderism, with abortion, with all mm -hmm. these like, huge issues in our country, they all go back to destroying human seed. Um, you know, that's what people don't realize transgenders become sterile in one way or another, either through surgery, through the hormones, yeah. a variety of things. Um, you know, and same with homosexuals that end up either just not conceiving because they're living as homosexual, but yeah. also um, AIDS and all kinds of other things, you know, all kinds of diseases. Yeah. And but, cancers of their rectum, because I mean, yeah. let's get real here. How unnatural of an act is that? Right. And then two women, what is it that they do? I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing really natural about it. So they claim, you know, well, you can't help who you love. Well, I love you, Laura, but I don't want to have sex with you right. or kiss you yeah. in any way. I mean, you know, you could love a person. Two women could become very close as sisters. Right. you are not needing to have any kind of sexual interaction. So, I mean, it's, it's all based on sex and dirtiness because when two heterosexual couples get together, the whole concept is to conceive. Yeah. Multiply like God asked us to do, you know? I mean, I know not everybody can conceive. There's a lot of sterile people, but the norm is be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, in fact, that's God's very first command to human beings. I didn't realize that until the other day. Yes, exactly. So we're looking at the LGBT. It's totally against that. It's Satan's way of polluting, destroying God's creation. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty sad. It is. Yeah. So have you known... Um, have you known a lot of other people that have come out of this now that you knew in the lifestyle? I know we've met a lot online, but do you know any that you knew while in the lifestyle? Well, I actually had a friend who was a, a model, a gorgeous looking guy. He modeled for the biggest brand name models that you could think of. And he was gay and then he transitioned. He had a lot of money because he made a lot of money as a model. And, um, once he did everything, I mean, he was gorgeous. He was a very good looking individual either way. Right. He contacted me and said, I'm detransitioning. Oh. I'm stopping all this thing. I feel like I've lost my soul. Yeah. You know, he, he was so distraught. Oh. And so he wanted nothing to do with anything. And I'm like, but what, what? Cause it's not like anything went wrong. He was like the perfect looking I mean, because he had the money to do everything. So I'm thinking right. to myself, wow, this person who turned out to be like the picture of what, you know, perfect transness is, said to me, I lost my soul and I want nothing to do with this. Wow. Because you do, you feel like you've like, you've lost your soul. You've, you've literally given your soul to the devil, yeah. you know, to do this, this craziness that doesn't have any functionality. There's no function. In transgenderism, there's no function in being gay or lesbian. No. There isn't anything. It's self, you know, it's like a very narcissistic self, me, 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 I, I, I type of attitude. And that's not what life is all about. And God didn't create us to walk around life looking at a mirror all day. Right. Or lusting yeah. after people. You know? Yeah, we create, it's like we worship the God in the mirror. Exactly. The, there's a guy that I listen to a lot that kind of, he actually was the one that spoke the truth that led me out of the lifestyle. And he talks a lot about that, that we worship the God in the mirror. Yeah. You know, we, instead of us being made into God's image, we want to make God into our image. Exactly. And create our own God. I wrote my first book back in 2006 called The Mirror Makes No Sense. It was my biology going into wow. transness. Yeah. So <laughs> The Mirror Makes No Sense and the album Enslaved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how prophetic. That's what I just love. Yeah. But people always ask me if God has a sense of humor. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it, it totally does. It's crazy. Crazy stuff, I tell you. 
I tell you. And so, uh, what made the difference? Because I know you detransitioned a couple of times. Yes. And then when you, but now there's a difference, and you've totally been set free. You don't have any desire to go back. Nothing. So, yeah. So, what's made the difference now? Well, the original time that I detransitioned, I wanted it. I wanted. I, I was. I felt like wow. But again, I was not allowed because I, I was with someone who claimed to me that they didn't come down and, and fell off a mountain for a woman. They came down with a Cuban heartthrob that they fell in love with. So right. I was almost like guilted going back to living as, as Mark. And so, you know, and then the other two times they detransitioned with me, but that didn't last. So I went back again and I was like, you know, it was really bothering me the last time. And I was like, I wasn't happy. I didn't want to be Mark anymore. You know, I knew it in my heart. God had, you know, we had been baptized wow. in Fort Lauderdale in the ocean, you know, and I was like, I was like ready to give my life, my heart. I wanted to live like a normal woman with this heartthrob of a person that I had next to me because I personally believe that the person I was with presenting as a man is like the most gorgeous thing that walked this earth, you know, but, you know, they wouldn't have it. So this last time God pretty much spoke to me and said, you know what you have to do. Wow. And I, it didn't take much convincing because I was ready. I was, I was done. Yeah, I was done. I was so done that like when I detransitioned, we got divorced in March. I'm March 8th to be exact. I left the house in I think the last week of February and I had all my legalities done. The divorce went through in three weeks, by the wow. way, talk about God saying this is over. Yeah. And then I had my legal name change. It took a month. And then I went to the doctor, the doctor that I had been prescribing my testosterone here in Silver City, wrote me the letter and you know, social security has a form and the doctor fills out. He was happy, he goes, oh my God, I'm so grateful you found God. And I'm like, and all this time you're prescribing me tea? You know, but he was like, he was like so happy. He filled it out, no problem. I went to the social security office. I picked the number, I didn't even get to sit down. They called my number, the guy looked at my paperwork, gave everything, boom, I got my social security in the mail a few days ago. Wow. So I was waiting for my the actual license, which I checked today. It's already been put in the mail. So it's all done. I mean, I'm legally a female, legally my name change. It's all done. So the difference is that it's it's all done. And I am happiest that I've ever been. I'm at peace. This is who God made me to be. I'm the daughter of the most high. And mm -hmm. I will praise his name and I will glorify him. And you know, this is all I want to do. This is all I want to do. I want to get a little traveling van so that I could you know, take my ministry on the road, help other people, you know, start putting some fire underneath some of these lukewarm Christians, get them to realize yeah. that God does not want any part of the LGBT. Yes, he loves them, yeah. but he does not love the behavior. Right. You know, that's what people need to understand. Yeah. And there's a reason it's not like God, you know, God revealed to me the other day. Like, it's not like he's, you know, up on his throne, just making arbitrary rules. So we don't have any fun. He has real reasons. You know, and it's because he doesn't want us to destroy ourselves. Exactly. Like you said, the, that your friend said, destroyed my soul. I mean, it was like, I just yeah. became nobody, you know, and was just so lost and so miserable. I know. Life can become nothing but lies. Yeah, it is. It is. And, but they don't see it. At the moment, we don't see it. Because I remember I used to fight it when everybody, you know, it's like, Anybody would say, I wasn't a man. I said, what do you mean I'm not a man? You know, and all this stuff. And it's like, but then you start realizing, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm not a man. Right. <laughs> you know, these little wrists and, and, you know, it's just like, I, sometimes it was like carrying the world on my shoulder. Like I just wanted, especially my last relationship, I just wanted them to like all, they were taller than me. It's like, can you just please be the dude? I don't, I want to be my little dainty female self, you know, I mean, yeah. even though I took testosterone, I lifted weights and everything else, but still, I mean, there's just, there's no comparison, yeah. you know, there's no comparison. Now it's funny because at the gym, since I'm not taking any tea, I'm like, I can't barely even lift anything. And I, I laugh at myself. <laughs> I because I'm, like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, 45 pound plate seemed like 200 pounds. Yeah. So I'm like lowering it down and keep lowering it down. And I'm like, you know, I got to lose all this muscle mass anyway. So I'm just like doing high reps just to try to stay toned and doing more cardio than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like? You were in um, church for how long before you detransitioned? Um, what do you mean like in church before? You said you were baptized. Yeah, we were. When we did the detransition the second time around, we were going to church probably it was a month. Okay. 
a month or so. And we were listened to, I mean, it was 24 seven, either Christian music or watching Christian movies or things of that nature, you know, but yeah. um, it was like a month and then went back month or two, you know. Oh, so you had detransitioned when you went to church. Yes. Okay, I missed that. Yeah. Part. Yeah. So the church was not necessarily just welcoming you as transgender. Oh no, no. Okay. As a matter of fact, when I started going to church, because I was still looking pretty manly, <laughs> with the, you know, it's like that. People look at me like, "What are you? Are you a trans woman?" You know, because it was right. like this time around. God has really, you know, I I know that I have a long ways to go. Yeah. But I see a lot of difference. And, you know, from this time around, it's like, you know, God's like doing miracles. Oh, you are so radiant. You just radiate the love of Christ. I love it. Yeah, because I feel I feel the Holy Spirit inside of me completely, completely. Wow. You know? Yeah, I've just been amazed. Uh, I, you know, the I think the church has forgotten in, in not entirely, but in some cases, it's like we've forgotten that Christ is the Savior, not the church. And we exactly. think, if, you know, like if we don't just welcome everybody in with open arms and just let them stay and be comfortable and yeah. God doesn't want us to be comfortable. Exactly. Like, it's like, come on, hang out a while, you know, <laughs> keep smoking your weed and keep dressing the way you are. Welcome one, welcome all. It's like, no, the concept is that you're, you're going to church to heal, but you already like you're doing you're taking steps to heal you're not just going in there continuing to to go to bed with whoever you want and wear your wigs and your dresses and continue to and say jesus loves me this i know you know it's like yeah he loves you but he wants you to follow his commandments he clearly says if you love me you'll follow my commandments yeah you know what i mean it's the the most man like if um if people could realize how much better our life is now like, why on earth would you leave me in my sin? I was miserable. I know. And that's what they don't understand. They don't understand. I mean, I've never felt such peace, such happiness. I don't ever feel lonely or alone because God's with me 24-7. If people watch me walking in the street, I talk to God all the time. They probably think I've gone nuts <laughs> because I'm talking to him all the time. I pray to him. And it's like like my best buddy. You know, and it's like, even when I pray at night, you know, it's like, I don't do all this like formal stuff. It's like, hey, dad, you know, thank you. You know, it's just like really down to earth. And that's the way I used to pray to him when I was little. Wow. You know, and it's like such an amazing relationship. I almost like, I see him chuckling. I see his approval. I mean, I get goosebumps because it's the most, and I cry. Sometimes I'm talking to him and I, I'm walking and says, you know how much I love you, God? And I'm crying as I'm telling him this, Wow. you know, and it's just like, I get all teary eyed and all like, the other day I was sobbing like a baby sobbing and it's like i'm so sorry father and i could just like feel him like hugging me and telling me it's okay it's okay you know it's so amazing you know i've never felt this way before i have like this this it's like a new heart a new mind you know if i could just bottle it and give it away yes you know i know what you oh. mean. i know i met a guy on the street today that um i would say is pretty clearly homosexual i mean you really don't know unless you ask but you know that's at least the way that he was like um, kind of acting and um, but he was so angry and so miserable and I tried to share Christ but he wanted no part of it and he's just like you know he's like please stop get away from me and it's just like he said he was an atheist and it was so clear even when he said it you could tell he was just angry at God and he was angry at Christians he was angry at the church and you know so sad it's like you are so miserable if I know I, I just want to give him what I found Exactly. And then they want to blame everybody else because they won't take any responsibility. They're miserable, they say, because if everybody else doesn't accept them. So you right. need acceptance to be happy. You need, like right. with trans people, they need validation to be happy. It's not just about them being them. No, no, no. They need validation. Gay people need everybody to accept them. They want to ram this down everybody's throat. Happiness does not depend on how other people look at you. Happiness is something within you. And you only have that when you're with Christ, when you're yeah. with God. You can't, nothing that you try to get outside of you is going to provide you that happiness. That's why they're never happy. You know, right. they go from point A to point B. They're looking around. They're still not happy. Okay, I'll go from point B to point C. They get to point C, still not happy. And that yeah. I know that because that's been my, I've been in relationships. I've traveled. I've done this. I've done, nothing's ever provided me with the peace and happiness that God has provided me. And it was there all along. I wish I would have like 
And God's got, well, I told you, I've been trying to talk to you forever, you dense girl. And I'm like, oh, Dad, I'm sorry, you know, but hey, better late than ever. I mean, the conversations, if I recorded my conversations with God, it, it's hilarious. You know, it really is. I'm, I'm the happiest that I've ever been, Laura. You know, wow. there's just, you know. And it's so evident, like looking at your face and just the way, um, the joy that you have and then looking at trans people who, um, claim to be happy, and yet there's such a sadness in their eyes. I know, I know, it's sad, it's sad. And they're never happy, they're never happy. And that's another reason why I didn't want to continue in that relationship that I was in. And any trans relationship or any gay relationship, they always have depression, nothing ever fulfills them. You know, you could travel the world, you could go all over the place, okay, let's do this, let's do that. It's like trying to appease somebody that cannot be appeased. Right. You know? Let's try trying to fill a bottomless pit with sin. Yeah. You know, I mean, if exactly. it's the bottom, it's not it's yeah. never gonna fill it. No. And it's hard to explain to people, you know, because they don't if they don't feel it, if they haven't opened their heart to God and they don't allow the Holy Spirit to come inside of them, they're not gonna feel it. They're they're like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about because I don't feel it. Well, it's like because you're not allowing God to go inside you. Right. You really don't want it. You want you want your cake and you eat it too. You want to have a foot on each world. Yeah. And you can't have it that way. You have to surrender completely. Yeah. You know, you have to show God that he's the boss. He's the one that needs to lead. You have to be submissive to him. And when he sees that, when he sees that you mean business, that's when he goes, okay, you know, I've, I see that you really want me. Right. In you fact, know? I was going to, you just reminded me of a scripture that I'm going to read real quick that I found earlier. And this, uh, a friend sent it to me. She's always, we send each other like verse of the day. But this one just really hit me today. And it said, um, let me pull it up here. It's 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8. It says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And so it dawned on me with verses 6 and 7. Um, he says, first, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. In other words, submitting to God is first. Then cast your cares upon him. And everybody wants it the opposite. They want to cast all their cares upon God. Right. You know, for God to fix everything, but they don't want to humble themselves first. I yeah. hear people all the time, like, God, if you'll fix me, I'll obey you. And yeah. God taught me that he said, no, obey me, and I will heal you. Exactly, because he doesn't want to waste his time. It's like he doesn't want to invest his time on someone that won't invest their time on him. Yeah. You know, pretty much. And he wants to see your heart. He wants to see how much you're willing to do to right. get to him. Are you willing to carry your cross? Yeah. You know, are you willing to like give it all for me? Yeah. And and that's what I did. I gave it all for him, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm happy I did because I'm, like I said, this is the most amazing feeling ever. The yes. most peaceful feeling. I mean, it's like, I don't care if I don't have a relationship ever again in my life. My relationship is with the father. You know, my husband is Jesus. If God wants to, you know, gift me a good husband, because that's another thing, you know, that he took away, not only did he take away the trans thing, he took away the lesbian thing, yeah. you know? And, and that's, you know, to me, that's massive. You know, that's really, really massive. Because yeah, a lot of people detransition, but then they go back to being lesbian or gay. And it's like, okay, well, you're not really solving anything here. You're still so, I mean, he took everything. He took the, the need to smoke, to drink, to any, anything that I have, masturbation, porn addiction, all that stuff. He just goes, okay, you're, you're clean. Wow. I mean, and I'm like, wow. I mean, you could go to therapy for a lifetime and not be healed. And with God, it was like instant. Yeah. That's why I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. Yeah, you touched on something earlier about, um, I don't know if you said it, but I was thinking it was when you were with your partner and you kept trying to detransition, and but you didn't want to leave him. Do you think people will ever truly be set free without severing those relationships? I don't think so. And I think that's what God was waiting for me to do. Yeah. And I kind of knew, you know, when I would pray and I would cry in the bathroom and I would pray that, you know, my spouse would, you know, have that awakening as well. And I, I try to ignore the voice, but he was like, you've got to, it's just you and I, you can't, you know, and I was just ignoring it. And I was like, 
oh God, you know, maybe I was trying to bargain with God. You know, you can't yeah. bargain with God. You know, God's the leader. He's going to do what he wants. And, you know, at the end, I realized that that's what he wanted. Right. You know, he wanted me to be set free. He wanted me to fully devote myself to him and to love only him and to mm -hmm. show him that I love only him. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wanted to cover one other thing. So how did you get um, involved in the media? You said that you were in um, on Maury Povich. And oh, gosh, yeah. How did that all get started? It, it was like, I was, back then, I, there wasn't a lot of trans guy. So I, would, I started doing a YouTube channel. And some of the producers, I guess, they were looking for trans guys. So they oh. could. So I got reached from Mari Povich. I mean, you name it. Hispanic. Oh my God. It was like a limousine every other day picking myself and my ex, um, the person I was with, who was genetically a female, we were being taken to all sorts of, of TV shows and international and documentaries. And one thing led, led to another and to another and to another. And it was like, it got to the point where my, my spouse at the time was like, this is too much. And I'm like, we've got to do this. You know, I was just like all into like, waving the flag and, and stuff like that. I just wish now that those people that interviewed me back in the day would interview this whole right. experience to show how powerful God is. You know? Yeah, that's the frustrating part is they want, you know, J, uh, James Shoup has found the same thing. Everybody that wanted, um, you know, his story when he first came out as non-binary and all those things, this media sensation, they want nothing to do with them now. Yeah, But you know what? It's going to turn around. I have a feeling, you know, and God kind of has told me that what goes up must come down. The pendulum swings yes. one way and the pendulum is going to swing the other way. When more and more people, affluent people, see how harmful this is for their children. And right yeah. now it's all fun and game. But when their kids start getting sick, when people start to die because of this, when yeah. bad things start to happen, the pendulum is going to swing the other way. And it will happen. Yeah. It will happen. There's going to be a ton of detransitioners. Yeah. And that's when the media is going to go, oh, well, we're going to have to cover this because you can't you can't hide things for forever. Right. You know. Yeah. And then they, they try, though, with the homosexual movement, like they had totally quit talking about AIDS mm -hmm. and any other like ill effects of um, homosexuality. You don't ever hear about that anymore. No, you don't. You don't, but we, the facts are there. You get, you know, yeah. like because now they're on medication that allows them to live. And, and you kind of wonder, was that the agenda in the first place? Mm. Because now they're not dying anymore. They're staying alive with these pharmaceuticals. Yeah. And how many of them are out there still having sex? Yeah, exactly. Now they have a pill to prevent you from con getting AIDS, which God only knows what kind of side effect that pill has. You yeah. Know? And, then it's and again, it's all about sex. Everything's based about sex. And they wonder why us Christians do not promote that because it, there's nothing pure about it. When you try to tell me you can't help who you love, that's right. You can't help who you love. But at the same time, you know, you, it's like love doesn't mean sex. Right. I mean, that's, that's like when that's just, you know, it, it's lust. Yes. It's lust. That's all, that's all it is. Because how many of them go from relationship to relationship to relationship? I know I did. Was that love or was it lust? Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's, um, it, and you're right. It's all about sex. It's all about narcissism. I was so narcissistic. I yeah. was so um, in love with myself. And, uh, but, so what do you want to, like, um, what is really your, the crux of your message? We talked, and I know you talked about, like, um, Christ and I set you free, but like, if you could just give one message to somebody that's really struggling, what would you say? I would say, take a look at their life and is, is it worth it? Is it worth what they're giving up? They're giving up their health and their spirit, their eternal spirit for a life that'll be a blink of an eye because we're only here for a blink of an eye. And what kind of function do they believe they're going to have doing what they're doing? Because in the long run, we all age. And if we're putting things in our body that's gonna make us get sicker and age quicker and deteriorate ourselves further, is it really worth it? Right. So it's like Cinderella was given, you know, whatever it was till midnight with the the little 
the um, what is it called the pumpkin that turned into a carriage and yeah. like, is it worth it really just for that one you know to lose your family because many older trans people men that have devoted marriages for a long long time and have a ton of kids is it worth giving all that up you know for your fantasy and is it worth forcing people because a lot the the ones that don't the wife that stick around you're forcing that wife to stick around. You're forcing your children to see you something that you're not. Yeah. You're creating trauma in these kids. Is it worth it to be so self-centered for a little bit of a little bit? And because I can't even say it's a lot of, you know, greatness. It's just a little bit of fun. Right. And that fun runs out because once the honeymoon stage is over, yep. then that's it, you know. The aha moment. <laughs> yeah, the aha moment where you're like, I'm an imposter. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on with me and just uh, letting me interview you. And uh, so, do you want to uh, pray and just sure. close this up? Do you want me to pray? Or, yeah. Or you, you pray? Maybe. No, you go. Heavenly Father. Okay. Heavenly Father, I want to take this time, first of all, to thank you for all the great people that you're connecting me with in my life, great brothers and sisters that are glorifying you. I want to take this time to ask you, Father, please help soften the hearts and the minds of those in the world that are accepting Satan's agenda. As we know, Father, that is not your plan. It's never been your plan. Your plan is very clear in your living word. And people are not listening. They're not hearing. They're creating their own version of your words and your own version of your image. And Father, please allow them to remove that veil from their eyes and let them see truth. You are a loving God, The people are testing your patience and they have to realize that as much of a loving God that you are, you're also a lawful God. And we need to follow your laws. We need to follow your commandments because that is how you want it to be, Father. You are God, we are not God, Father. Father, please have mercy on them, but at the same time, help them see, help them heal, help them feel your love because your love is the most amazing thing ever. Thank you once again, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.